Life in a world that keeps changing Think that it's progress you're making Copy and paste pretty faces All the time Picture so perfect Hello wonderful people, welcome and welcome back again to my channel. I greet all of you according to your time. Yes, my correct people, I don't come again with another news. This one, eh, it don't pay government to a way. It pay like Mohammed for like Mohammed to come out, come begin the talk concerning the asylum will be say British grant uh, Biafran people. And Biafran people now, no Kukuma accept the asylum, I don't know the one will be say like Mohammed body the pepe. Make I drop the video sharply, make una hear for una self according to Arise News. Meanwhile, if today not the first time, be say you they come across my channel, you are highly welcome. Consider to smash on the subscribe button if you have not subscribed, put on the notification bell so that you will continue to get updates from this channel. And to all my returning subscribers, I appreciate all of you now for the massive support you now they do for this channel. And if you find this video interesting, like the video, leave your comment below what you think about the video, and also share the video out to other people who also see them. Make we watch the video, my wonderful people. Thank you. The Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, has reacted to the United Kingdom's decision to grant asylum to persecuted members of the proscribed indigenous people of Biafra and a movement for the actualization of the sovereign state of Biafra, Massov. On Tuesday, the minister said the decision amounts to sabotaging the fight against terrorism and disrespects Nigeria as a nation. The decision of the United Kingdom to grant asylum falls within the new guidelines of the United Kingdom's visa and immigration rules on how to treat asylum applications by members of Biafra's secessionist groups. Rufai, I believe that IPOB have responded to this um, decision mm. and they have you know they have thanked the United Kingdom but they obviously declined it because what they seek is really not asylum but a sovereign Biafra state your take on the story I mean this has been on for a while the the push for a sovereign state of Biafra uh, let's not forget that we fought a war as regards this in the 60s we made efforts at healing no victor no vanquish but the factors that caused the war are still rife in our faces now as we speak today. We had an interview not quite long with Ayah Adebanjo, and he made some very salient points. Not necessarily all I agree with him. The fact that the country is still very marginalized across many lines, there are agitations here and there, there's a way we should look at the constitution that has not been done. The fact that Nigeria functioned better as federating units back in the days and regional systems. And that's why we're having the offshoot of all of this. In the first place, if we are fair to one another, we shouldn't have agitations like this in the first place. If we continue with, you know, the regional system, if it wasn't turned into a unitary system after, you know, the coup, and what happened in the 60s. We shouldn't be having what we are having today. So this agitation, and as it is in other parts of the country, is because of the fact that something needs to be done. So for me, I think it's a clarion call. If we're trying to build one strong Nigeria, we should build a Nigeria where people are seeking asylum in other parts of the world. We should build a Nigeria that is inclusive with justice. And that's what we keep calling for. When you check every part of the country, there's agitation. The question we should be asking, why are we having these agitations? We're talking about Sunday Go in the South. We're talking about Biafra. We're talking about other parts of the country. But we should build a country that is inclusive, that works for everybody. And how can we do that? It's when we rejig the format at which we're even working together in the first place. So it's a bigger talk, bigger than the case of oh, asylum seeking and the UK talking about all of this. It is a call on us to build our country with fairness and having great conversations. And where does it start from? Reviewing the recommendations in the Sovereign National Conference we had in 2014. That is there wasting away. Because in 2014, we called every part of this country to come together and talk of how the future of the country will be. And we did talk. And we did make recommendations. 
So the question is, are we leaving those recommendations behind? Because we need to make this country one, work one way or the other. So the information minister here can be upset about the fact that asylum is being granted to IPOB members. But the question we should ask ourselves is this. If we truly have a country that works for all, are we, are, do, do we need to get to this level where there's so much violence in every part of the country? See what's happening in the East. See what's happening in the West. Everywhere you turn to in this country, there's violence. The reason why we have this violence, because of the injustice, the iniquity, the, the iniquities, I should use that word, over the years, the fact of marginalization, the fact that this country works for some, it doesn't work for some. That's why we have 33% unemployment. So it cuts across all. And this is the time leadership should stand tall. I always use the word rise up twice at store to be able to tackle the problems we are facing so that we don't derail the country. All right. <clears throat> what are the issues involved here? The issues are as follows. One, the UK Visas and Immigrant uh, Department, the consular office, as it were, declared in new guidelines that persecuted members of the indigenous peoples of Biafra will be granted asylum, visas, right, if they are persecuted. Now, the position of the uh, United Kingdom is consistent with the 1956 uh, UN uh, Convention on uh, Refugees and the 1967 Protocol, which removes geographical and time limits from the original 1956 Convention. And the issue is about human rights. It's not about IPOP as an organization. It's about individual rights, human rights. And what the principle under the 1956 Convention says about asylum is that if you are in a country, whether you are a member of IPOB or you are a member of any group, if you are persecuted, then the international community will come to your rescue and offer you refuge. So to that extent, I do not think that the United Kingdom has committed any offense uh, that requires the kind of emotional response that came from the minister. Second issue, the Minister of Information of Nigeria says, well, if the UK is now going to be granting asylum to uh, members of uh, IPOB, not as an organization, persecuted members, then it means that the UK is sabotaging Nigeria, the UK is encouraging terrorism in Nigeria, and he also pointed out that IPOB is a proscribed organization. Yes. But he made one very instructive point. He said, well, this is not within his poor view. It falls within the poor view of the uh, Minister of uh, Foreign Affairs. And there are established protocols uh, in uh, customary international law if a country wants to object to a step taken by another country. The 1956 Convention uh, is not absolute. It says that once you can establish that that particular individual who is seeking asylum has committed crime against peace, has committed crime against UN protocols, then of course you can raise an objection. So if Nigeria is going to raise an objection, it's not at a news agency of Nigeria forum where the minister is uh, giving uh, you know, a speech. It will be something that will follow you know, uh, protocols within international, customary international uh, law. Now, uh, what is the issue? Again, the third issue that remains is simply that anybody can apply for asylum whether you are a member of IPOP or not, okay? As long as it's within that con uh, convention. And the whole issue is about, as I said earlier, human rights. And that's why that 1956 convention is managed, is overseen by the United Nations Commission for Human Rights. So um, as far as I'm concerned, the minister has expressed an opinion, which anybody can uh, express. But specific issues will be dealt with on a case-by-case -case basis Correct. and whether or not Nigeria uh, makes an obje objection. However, we should all remember that consular rights are domiciled within the province of the country that is issuing visa or that is adopting Im immigrants or that is uh, granting asylum. It's not a thing that Nigeria can dictate to another country under the principles of sovereignty. No, sir, Dr. Batichindri. 
Well, absolutely not. Nigeria cannot dictate. And the idea is not that if you're in IPOB or MASOB, you get asylum. No. All the cases will be examined on their merits and then a decision will be made. It's not about if you're being prosecuted in your country, come here. It's about if you're being persecuted. And the minister is doing, I suppose, what he's expected to do, expressing his umbrage at this. But you know, I have front row um, experience of being a political prisoner and dealing with all of that. At that time in Nigeria, Ni the Nigerian government, the Abacha um, regime, took umbrage against um, other countries that were giving safe harbor to persecuted Nigerians who fled for their lives. So I have the same reaction in this regard. They have no right to come out with this kind of a statement. There are people who feel persecuted and the right to life is sacrosanct. If you feel that your life is in danger because 150 members of IPOD were killed in this country, you have the right to leave. Absolutely. The um, Namdi Kanu, a political prisoner, I'm sorry, he didn't kill or kidnap. He was held for a year and a half without trial as a political prisoner. It is unacceptable and All that right. is just a fact of the matter. If the Nigerian government insists on pretending, sticking their heads in the sand like an ostrich, pretending that we operate a level playing field, this is a note to them to see that other people are not convinced, other people are not persuaded. There is the impression that is very real that Nigeria is sympathetic to some people and unsympathetic to others, unfairly so. We have somebody sitting in the cabinet today who was saying that unbelievers should be killed. He's delighted when, what was that nonsense he was saying, that hateful rhetoric? He says he has recanted. Yeah, but he did say it. And he has repented. But he did say it. He and deserves a plate of yeah. jollof rice. <laughs> Exactly. Exactly. So that, that impression is there. I would urge the federal government to look within and to correct that. Absolutely. And the IPOP message is also clear to the United Kingdom. Thank you, but no thank you. We don't want to be residents of the United Kingdom. We want to be citizens of Biafra. Correct. So I would urge the federal government to address why their citizens are all attempting to jump ship and work on that rather than pointing fingers. Very well said.